here's a bit of an impromptu update on the Project 106 GTI. It is now going to be here until next year, rather sadly, because it's an awesome little car. But um, yeah, this is where it stays. It's outside. If anyone wants to give it a home for winter in a nice garage, let me know. But um, for the time being, the Clio is the only one that's going in storage. I think at some point this will end up in storage, but yeah, for the time being, it's uh, it just sits outside basically. But there's no rust on it as of yet, so fingers crossed that that stays that way. But yeah, if I, if it starts to look like it's rusting away, then um, yeah, we'll stick it in storage next year. But I mean, it's not looking bad. It gets um, moved around, gets taken out for a short run. We'll start up in a minute. Let's try and get the car in. It is absolutely freezing out here as well. Uh, somewhere. Anyway, it's um, like a one-shot treatment of Red X, which um, helps to clean out all the fuel lines. It's meant to keep the... Um, it's meant to... Sink the word. It's meant to clean... It. So, um, yeah, we've been running this for four months, and it has... We have seen an improvement. It's up to the miles per gallon slightly. So I was looking on Parker's, and Parker's think that the little... If I can get this right... Oh, where? Let's go down. If my math serves me right, the MPG was about 34, 35 miles per gallon. Now, when this was new, the MPG came out, I think, 32, 33. So it's definitely up the miles per gallon by one, possibly two, in the time we've been using it. Let's warm up first. Uh, right, so Red X. This is what we've been using for the last three, three months. Yeah, it's three months. Uh, so six tank falls, six bottles of this in the 106. It's definitely increased miles per gallon. Um, I can't remember the quoted figures and the math that I did a few weeks ago. So don't just read the blog post. I'll put the link, linky link, in the description. Um, but yeah, the miles per gallon have, have, has, has increased in the 106. Parkers reckon the miles that you'll get to a tank in the 106 GTI is 326. Now I got to 360 before filling up and the red light, that was just into the red light. So I could have gone a little bit more. Maybe, maybe pushing 380, maybe 400. Um, and when you work that out, if I work out that I've got 360 miles to a whole tank, um, you do all the math and it comes back at about 34, 35 miles per gallon. Now the original stated MPG of the 106 GTI is 32 miles per gallon. So it has increased maybe like by one or two miles per gallon over the paper figures when this car came out. I don't know what the car was doing before. We should have done a test before we did three months worth of this, but we didn't. So on paper, it has increased. Now in terms of um, the, in terms of uh, emissions, I don't know. This car had a problem with getting through its MOT, but that was before it had its service and it flew through an MOT regarding emissions. So yeah, I can't comment in that regard, but in terms of miles per gallon, it's gone up through what the original manufacturers reckoning was now back then they didn't have urban extra urban combined and stuff like that. it was just one miles per gallon so it was a lot better but um yeah working it out and doing the math it has helped now red x will also it cleans the fuel lines it will clean the injectors and it'll just make sure that it's like a health check for your fuel system basically and i know it's difficult to say that something you put in like how can you say that whatever is in a tiny little bottle can actually help or what what is that going to do and the argument is that you don't need red x because fuel premium fuels contain cleaning additives now they do but red x's argument to that is you don't know how much cleaning additive is in it so it's all probably pr marketing and bump because it could be 0.01 of a litre could be cleaning additives and I know um, I can't remember who it is I see the Shell or BP have said yeah now with boosted cleaning additives blah 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 
you know in every single little 90 milliliter bottle of this, that's pure cleaning additive. Warm. Um, that's pure cleaning additive. So there's no ambiguity with that. Um, when we went to where I went to Red X and had a chat with them, they've they changed their formula uh, quite a lot. So they have a guy that's working. I have a lab basically and uh, there's a guy that's constantly working on the formula looking to tweak it looking to improve it so it's not like this is the same stuff that they've always put in since like the 19 1920s 1922 red x was red x first came about so yeah it's not like they've just created a product and left it for the last hundred years it's constantly uh, adapting constantly being developed to help modern cars um, I'll keep putting it in the 106 because I do genuinely think it's helped and with a car this age with this mileage any little help any little benefit is a help so £2.50 each time you fill up if you buy the boot pack with the one shot treatments I'll stop holding that now um, get a bit attached um, yeah so it's £2.50 each time you fill up and with a fill up on this it's 45 maybe 50 quid so it's not a huge amount um, and I'll stop using the premium fuel in this so I'll just go back to normal 95 Ron rather than 97 because yeah before I was using the Red X I was using 97 just to help it give it a bit of a clean out because it would have always been used on regular fuel until I until it was in my ownership so yeah I'll go back to normal fuel use the Red X and see how I get on but um yeah, it has it has helped in terms of paper figures and the miles per gallon I've been seeing, but it's not going to give you 10, 20 more miles per gallon. It's given me like one to two miles per gallon, but it's the knowledge that it's looking after the injectors, the fuel lines, the fuel pump, all bits like that. It's stopping build up of deposits. So in terms of that, and on a car that's got 103,000 miles, I'll keep using it. So yeah. Thanks for um, Red X for partnering with us for doing this. It's always interesting when a product that is a bit ambiguous like this, you actually get to use it and test it on your own vehicle, on your own basis, rather than reading what other people have read. Um, and yeah, I can definitely say it works. And for the fact that um, I put in another post that um, my mate's got a 1.4 Quicksilver 106. He developed a random misfire, took it to a garage, they changed the spark plugs, they changed the coil pack. Still, the random misfire was happening. So I happened to say to him, have you tried Red X? He was like, no, I've never used it. So he got a, he got some of the big bottles, poured it in, it had no immediate effect. But once he'd used a tank full, the misfire had gone. And now sort of like 100 miles later, it's still going. He's since stopped using the Red X probably for a month the misfires come back so this week i think today when i messaged him he was putting some more in and we'll see what happens but on that basis the red x has solved some random problem to do with a um yeah a misfire on an old i can't even remember what mileage is it's probably like ninety thousand mile 106 that has always been used on regular fuel so yeah in terms of that i've seen an mpg increase in that it's benefited him i think it works uh, so yeah, and I did get some awesome car mats from Red X. Um, I'll intercut the video here with some trickery. Yeah, uh, Red X got me some awesome mats for Christmas that are customised for the 106. I never had car mats for the 106, so yeah, they're awesome. Thanks for those guys. Um, in terms of the 106 for next year, I think it will be the main car in summer again because it's just incredible. Um, looking to possibly get the alloys refurbished because they're a little bit knackered and it would tidy the car up. The tyres, it probably needs new tyres because I think I've got the receipt for these and they're about six years old, so I don't really like to keep tyres, especially when they've been stood. Yeah, they just rubber gets hard and it's just not safe. So probably new tyres. I'll take it to Peugeot Festival again. We'll take it up the hill climb, non-competitive. It would be cool to get it on a track day, but I don't really want to kill the car. I mean, it's nearly a 20 year old car. So yeah, we'll see about that. Um, but yeah, it's been awesome to finally get it back on the road this year. It's been, I think three or four years since I've owned it, but you'll see in the other blog, blogs, if bl vlogs, blogs and vlogs, if you go back to them that, yeah, I spent a lot of work over the first two years myself doing bits 
um, removing rust from underneath, protecting it, spraying all the boot, um, so much, finding little bits of interior trim that needed replacing or just were missing, just really looking after it to be honest. Um, yeah, I went to have all the service, the new clutch and everything like that, new alternator this year. So to finally get it on the road and drive it has been incredible and um, it's been four years in the making. But yeah, this little thing's been epic and it didn't let me down once, even when the alternator was gone and I had to drive 120 odd miles with no alternator, this thing just kept going. It was incredible. So yeah, that video is to come as well. Um, I should have done that, it was months ago. But yeah, 2018, there's a few plans with it. Um, in terms of road trips, I don't think we're gonna do that much. There is a possible trip to the Peugeot Museum, but I think we're gonna get something a little bit more special than 106 for that, and it's a long way. So again, I'd rather not take it sort of through France and back. But we'll see, it's possibly an option. So um, yeah, thanks for watching the vlogs and um, yeah, we'll catch up in the new year because yeah, there's like three days left of this one. So yeah, see you in the new year and there'll be more Project 106 GTI adventures. See you later guys.